you have to control your own feelings, okay? It's not on other people to make sure they don't talk about a topic that makes you feel bad, all right? All right, welcome to Mind and Magic, where we demystify the occult and talk about all things esoteric. Today, we're going to discuss a viral video rant by comedian Tom Segura and why he is 100% correct. So, let's get into it. Every time we talk about like a watch or a car, I'll get us a, like a, a bunch of messages from losers that that try to tell me that mm -hmm. I'm I'm making them feel bad about their situation. You're in control of your own situation and your own feelings. So don't put it on me that you feel bad that I have something that oh, but. I, I'm struggling with rent this month. Figure it the f out, okay? Like, don't make my life be a problem for your life. If you don't like it, guess what? You're not going to be able to control what people talk about. People are going to talk about things that you don't have for the rest of your f life. So you can decide, like, okay, I won't. Li fine, don't listen to me. Don't listen to that person anymore. But you have to control your own feelings, okay? It's not on other people to make sure they don't talk about a topic that makes you feel bad, all right? Like, I lost 20 grand gambling this weekend. Go ahead. All right, so apparently this video has been making the rounds, and as it so happens, it made its way to me as somebody had sent me a link. I suppose they remember me talking about this very thing almost 10 years ago when I started this YouTube channel. Tom Segura here in his rant to his fans is 100% correct. He's not 10% correct. He's not a quarter correct. He's not a half or even 90% correct. He's 100% correct. And this would have been common knowledge and not controversial at all just five to seven years ago. But because we now live in this woke, inverted, Clifothian clown world, there are those who are upset with his take on this. And they're not so much offended over what he's saying. They're just offended for the sake of being offended. There are those who are just like that now. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's a cancer on society. Those who are offended are the very losers he's talking about. Because he's saying that when people see nice things and it makes them feel bad, and they complain about it to where they don't want to be shown the things because it makes them feel bad, that's a choice. They're saying that he shouldn't talk about those things or show those things to prevent them from feeling bad, when it should be a powerful motivator. Because if you really want those things, you should get off your butt and go get those things. The choice lies with either being inspired or defeated, feeling bad about it, much as in the choice of those who are offended by what other people say. Somebody said something that you didn't like and you were offended by it, then that's your choice. Because to say somebody made you do or feel anything, is to say that that person has power over you, like a puppet. And I've never understood this trend where the person who is offended or is made to feel bad goes after the person they claim did that to them in legal proceedings or in court and have the court side with them, as if that person is responsible for the person who felt bad when it was entirely their choice. I mean, if you have that much power and responsibility, over that person, you might as well put a leash on them and walk them home. You get to choose to be one of the two people. You can be the person that sticks in the hole and goes, woe is me. Or you can be the person that goes, oh, that's cool. I want that. Sure. I want yeah. to work to get. Dane Cook is my example of this. Dane Cook got cool. He had cool. Talk to him about it. I remember I got into his car. He had the Land Rover, the big Land Rover with a cell phone inside there when I got in his car. Now, look, there are, I know there are comics that saw him pull up to the Laugh Factory back in the day, and they're like, F him. Of course. I saw it, and I went, oh, that's cool, man. I thought that, that's too. That's possible. I thought that, too. And I will tell you, as someone that witnessed f***ing touchdown, the touchdown of this man, Tom Segura did not always have money. <laughs> you think you were short on rent? Tom went through a, a pecan pie epidemic where he was eating pecan pies left and right and spending his money on pecan pies living in Koreatown in the sketchiest neighborhood true. in the world. Well, That's a I, great speech, man. 
If you're upset because people have nicer things than you, then you should use that as motivation to work for those nicer things yourself instead of letting jealousy and envy fester. And there's way too much jealousy and envy in today's world. And it goes hand in hand with being offended by everything. I'm drawing the parallels here because it's the same kind of mindset. I think Dave Ramsey, the finance guy, said it best when he said that jealousy is, I want what you have. And envy is, I want what you have, but because I can't have it, I don't want you to have it either. That's when you start getting into the socialism and communism aspects to everything. Is it any wonder that the most woke, offended people claiming victimhood all the time are also your Marxists and socialists, those who also aren't satisfied with the current system? They're not satisfied with their own lives, so they're not satisfied with the system, and yet they think they know better than everyone else. They think they have a better way when they can't even manage their own lives doesn't make any sense. I mean, that's a lot of the reason that the country is in the state that it's in right now, because those in Washington, on both sides of the aisle, mind you, don't know how to run their own lives, let alone the country. But it's such a shame that so many young people are falling for socialist and communist ideals that are rooted in envy, because it's that mindset that will keep them in poverty, or losers, as Tom Segura says. It's really all rooted in the same thing. Instead of being inspired and saying, wow, I really can become that wealthy, there's proof. They instead say, no, I'm not that wealthy, so you shouldn't be either. So let's divide up your wealth amongst everyone equally so that we're all poor. I would never say that, so you shouldn't be able to either. So let's ban and censor all the things that are offensive. Not offensive to you, but to me. You have nice things that I don't have, so you shouldn't be able to talk about them because it makes me feel bad. It's all rooted in envy and an inflated sense of self-importance and entitlement. And it is cancer. It is cancer of the mind. It is cancer to your success. And it is a cancer that they try to spread to other people in malignancy. You know, it really comes down to a question of, are you your brother's keeper? And by brother, I mean somebody that you don't even really know, not an actual family member. Some of you may be your brother's keeper. Are you responsible for total strangers and their feelings? Something that they themselves alone are in charge of and should manage. So I am in complete agreement with Tom Segura on this one. Big surprise, I've only talked about it several times because it is so important. Mindset is arguably the most important thing. For without the proper mindset, you will fail. That's why this channel is called Mind and Magic and not just magic. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and share it if you did. Shout out to Tom Segura for the epic rant. And I will see you next time. Take care. The, the main problem that I have with the actual with the issue is somebody saying, you having a conversation makes me feel bad about my situation. Therefore, you should avoid that. It's like, dude, you don't live in the real world. No. If that's, if that's how you think the world works, that you can let people know that a conversation about something makes you feel bad about your situation, good luck.